Are we live? I'm unable to tell. Hi, Bonnie. Yes, you're live. Okay, thank you. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Now I Educate. And today we're going to be talking about sketching as a foundation for painting. So we'll understand the difference between what is a sketch versus drawing. We'll look at two artists who sketch, who are actually excellent artists who sketch. Um, understand why we are going to sketch in today's world when we have uh, phones with wonderful phone apps at our fingertips. And then we'll move on to a demonstration where uh, we'll understand how to get started sketching in plain air simplify composition and troubleshoot. So I'm Satyavani Pipala Akula. My career um, actually started in the science sector. I was sequencing the human genome, then moved on to being a software engineer. And all this while I was doing art, I'm passionate about art. And 10 years ago, I uh, you know, uh, resigned and uh, became a professional artist. And I now have a studio in downtown Elmira. I do commission portraits, sculptures. I'm also a trained uh, Kuchipudi dancer, which is an Indian classical dance. And I teach both dance and classes. All right, so what's the difference between a sketch and a drawing? A sketch is also a drawing, but it's something that we do really quick. Why do we even need to do it? Think about sketch as a relationship. You know, you are, let's say you're going to a party and you have a group of people and you're trying to decide which group should I go into. That is a sketch. You're trying to quickly get an idea, just talk to each group and get an idea of where should I put my maximum amount of energy, time, so, and commitment. So a drawing is a commitment to an end goal that you will have something that resembles you know, X object or so on, whereas a sketch is done very quickly. You're trying to understand what should I commit to. Most of us as oil painters do do sketches and they are called block-ins. We usually do it with the same material, which is oil paints, and we use turpentine or mineral spirits to kick, uh, quickly take a little bit of color and uh, in the, like in this particular case, you see that uh, these are fishes, beautifully colored ones. And these are large shapes that I started with to end up with a final painting. But this block in is also a sketch. But that type of sketching is not what I'm going to be talking about. I, In this case, I already know what the composition is and where the fishes are going to be. It was very simple. Not many decisions had to be made, so I could just go in with color. These are two different artists. On the left is Mary Kesset. She was one of the original members of Nawa, so I decided to pick her. And uh, on the right is Raja Ravi Varma. He's an artist from India who, during his time, took the country by storm with his paintings. So I decided to um, portray him. And they were both contemporaries and they might have exhibited at Chicago at the same time. I'm not sure about that, but I, I think they did. All right, so this is a painting by Mary Cassett. It's called um, Breakfast in Bed. Beautiful painting. The composition is beautiful. And you knew, you, looking at this picture, you know this is, an, it, this is a person, an artist, who knows how to draw and how to paint pretty well. So let's go on and look at this this is another painting of hers it's called in the Logue. and here's a woman sitting in the opera using binoculars and on the right is what you see as a sketch now we are quite aware that mary cassett could draw even looking at this and paint so what is this this is I don't think it was ever intended to be seen by the public. It was for the artist to determine a value study. That is, 
how dark and how light should something be in the final painting. So it's just, you know, a quick study she did. And maybe she was also trying to figure out the hair over here, if you see. All right, now this is Raja Ravi Verma's painting and it's uh, the title is There Comes Papa. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of, uh, you don't get the real uh, beauty of the paintings when you see tiny pictures, but it's a spectacular painting. And uh, you can see the dog is over here. Mama is there with the little baby. You know, look at the how the eyes are, the way her finger, it's a beautiful composition, very, uh, you know, nicely arranged and beautifully drawn and painted. Look at the necklace, the strands of thread around the baby's necklace and the way the arms are turning. So we know this artist can draw and paint pretty well. And if you look at this painting, this is another painting, it's called um, Gypsies from Southern India. On the left is actually a sketch of this particular little girl. And we, we are pretty sure this is not intended for public uh, viewing because right underneath it, the artist did not even bother to keep it, you know, clean or whatever. There is another sketch that they were trying out. On the right is a drawing. You know, he was trying to, I guess, figure out, you know, the angle and how should, and whether the placement of this particular utensil should be here or so on. So, all right, so, it makes sense that in that era, you know, when they did not have the photograph, for, uh, where they did not have the cell phones as readily available as we have now, that they use sketching. But in this age, do we really need to sketch? And I would say yes, because for one thing, the camera is not very good at capturing the values or the color in the dark areas and the shadows. Well, we can say there are plenty of apps right now where we can quickly go in and change the colors and make it match. True, that can be done, but we are also spending a lot of time into understanding the app versus drawing and understanding what is in front of us. But still, you know, it can still be done. But I think the major reason why one should draw is when we are out in plain air, which means outside sketching, there are a lot of objects that are not necessarily in the area that we are trying to fit in. We might have to take a tree that is outside this area somewhere over there and bring it in. We might have to take a little branch from outside this area and bring it in. We are building a composition for people who are not present at that area who can see the entire breadth of things and take in the beauty. We are creating a tiny piece of it on a, um, on a, on a certain format. So I think when you sketch, it really helps you to understand, to bring different, uh, what object should I bring together? What value value should I do? And how should the composition be? All right. The reason I played that video is this is a video of a waterfall at Havana Glen, which is in New York. When we are outside, we are bombarded with visual elements and there are plenty of opportunities where we can have paintings done from different things. So let me play this again, just to give you an idea. You know, this particular area could be a painting this area over here with the ferns could be a painting. So could this area or the pond that you're actually not seeing in the video where the waterfall is coming into, that could be another area of painting. How do we determine that? So there is so much bombardment that sketching really helps us figure out what we would like to sketch. What would we, like, we would like to commit to a painting? So in this particular um, 
um, slide, I'm showing you two different sketches I did. I knew I wanted a vertical format. So I went ahead and started with a black and white sketch. In this particular scene, the area that the water, the length, the, the length where the, of the pond, the length of the waterfall, and the length of the mountains or the rocks above were all the same. You know, the, it was pretty monotonous and there was, you know, so when all three things are same, there is nothing that is having an extra weight to really draw your attention to. So it was a pretty monotonous uh, composition, but I, at this point, I was not concerned about that. I hadn't decided which part of the, um, you know, of the scene in front of me, I was going to edit. So I just decided to do a sketch where I copied it down. My decision was that though I knew that I was going to make this a vertical format, which I did, I still kept the length of the uh, pond and the length of the waterfall and the length of the mountains the same. I was not concerned because this is not a final painting. Though, as I was going through, I noticed that this whole area over here, that waterfall is about the same length of that area over here. And this area was, especially over here, was very flat. You know, nothing interesting happening there. So I condensed and squished that area and made it smaller so it would come up here and did a couple of adjustments so there wasn't another um, you know, horizontal line going through to the waterfall. I changed that a little bit, moved the rocks that were up on this side of the, um, you know, of the uh, scene a, a little bit closer in. So I was making little adjustments as I was going in uh, with the sketch. And mind you, I did take photographs um, later on, but this sketch really helped me even to determine which areas should I photograph, you know, if I if I did intend to make a large painting out of it. So once I had that, I went on to do a watercolor sketch. This isn't a final painting either because I was playing around. I realized that there was beautiful light hitting the top of the mountains where there were trees, but this whole area was dark over here. You know, there wasn't much happening over here. And I thought, why don't I just try to bring that little uh, area of light and see how I can play with it. So this was still experimental and it'll help me when I do the final painting. All right. Now that was one, you know, the vertical format was one way of doing it. But what if I wanted to do another format, which is horizontal? Yeah, which is horizontal. So the way what I did was just did a, de a demo at home for you guys to understand. In this video, I am going to demonstrate how to do sketches in pencil before you start an oil painting. This is a sketch that I have done before. And it is, if you notice, just done on a regular uh, card that I had at that time. I always carry a clipboard with me and here, yeah, and a clip and usually whatever size of paper I have, I, you know, I can put it in there and I have clipboards in different sizes that I use, but um, you can also have sketchbooks that's fine or just regular sheet of paper and i prefer the softer pencil 6b pencils because you can really go from light to very dark very quickly and they have a thick enough point that you can um you know go across a large area very quickly one skill that is very important to develop is to go from dark to light quickly which is you know Using the same pencil, but changing the 
pressure that you have on the pencil and holding it further away. I actually use the pencil extender uh, because they get shot and you give a longer life to them and you use the extenders. So that's it about materials. Now let's go to the first thing you do when you um, are outside is to determine what would you like the format to be? And what do I mean by format? By format, I mean, would you like the sketch to be horizontal? Whoops, that was out of focus. There you go. Horizontal. Okay, let's go vertical. And both these are rectangular or just make it a square. This is the first decision we have to make. I tend to choose vertical or, horiz vertical or horizontal, um, not necessarily square because I can always cut whichever piece I'm not interested in and make it a square. So that's what I go with. The next thing to determine is um, where should your horiz horizon be? If you put it right in the middle, it is pretty monotonous. You know, let's assume that this is land or in our case, waterfall, and there's the sky. It's equally distributed. Let's put it lower. That means we are giving more emphasis to the sky or whatever is over here. Um, and this can be, or we can put it right here. And I think for our case, since our emphasis is on the waterfall, this would be a better format for us to work with. I start off with uh, three rectangles that are roughly about the same size. And um, I'm trying to see where should I place my main object of interest, which is going to be the waterfall that is cascading down. It's a triangle and for starters, we could place it right in the middle over here. Let's say, you know, it's, and I'm drawing very lightly, you know, so let's say, you know, I put it over there and uh, here we decided that this is the horizon for us over here because that's the start of the waterfall. And I'm doing this and there is the dark shadow on this part. I could probably move it a little higher. Let's see the rule of thirds. You know, yeah, yeah, that, that looks about good. So I'm going to just place it over there. And uh, this is going to be the shadow part of the um, stones, which is actually a beautiful layer. But right now, all I'm doing is a value study. A value study is where I try to figure out how dark or light my, um, here, just like this over here, you know, how dark or light my object should be. So that's what I'm trying to achieve over here. So I just go in and um, make this dark because I know that's going to be the dark uh, shadows. And go in. All right, so that's the dark part, and this is the lightest part, and the other side is also the mountains or the slate hill, but this is slightly, not slightly, quite a bit actually, lighter than that, but darker than the waterfall. Um, it does seem okay, but a little bit monotonous. These two sizes are almost equally divided. Let's see if we can shift the weight of our painting to one side. Okay, so in this case, let's move the what the shadow part. Let's make the shadow part less. So again, here's the horizon. And I have my waterfall cascading down from here. So that part I'm committed to. And then I go in and make the dark value for the shadow part of the area. So right now I've divided the entire painting into three values, light, dark, and uh, medium. You 
Yeah, I think that's kind of interesting too. Let's go to the other side and actually make the lighter side smaller and see how that works. So for that, here's the horizon. I've raised it a little from here, but I think I like it a little higher. So I'm going to bring it down so that it'll be towards the edge, you know, and that gives a large dark area. depending on what I add over here, this could be an interesting composition or this, but I think I'm going to stick with this one because I really like, um, I can put interesting colors in the shadows here. And uh, there is a nice play of uh, uh, the way the rocks are coming in. And I can actually make this we can add a little bit more detail as we go in into the area at this point, because now I know what my sketch is, you know, my, what my uh, painting format is going to be. So I can go in over here and just maybe add a little bit over there. Yeah, I kind of like how this is flowing. There's a rhythm to the way the rocks are moving into the waterfall over here and into the shadows. So the eye will move nicely around here. I think I like this composition and that's what I'm going to stick with it. So this is how the sketches helped me make the decision. You know, since I've drawn this, I have had time to reflect. And um, I'm thinking, this particular uh, sketch would probably be even more interesting if it was a square. Maybe just, you know, move this, cut this here and cut a little bit from there. And I think that would be an interesting um, composition or maybe, you know, move it a little further. But this is how I use my sketches. You know, I'm not concerned about keeping them clean or neat or uh, this is just information for me as to how can I go further. And after this, it, it would be fine to do another drawing, sit down and actually do a couple more sketches of this particular uh, style, go into the detail of the rocks over here or even do a watercolor sketch or an oil sketch. And uh, that'll help me determine the colors that are there within these rocks. And I'll show you an example of a sketch as I go through. Whoops. I think I am in a little bit of a loop. I have to get out of. I'm trying to get out of this. All right, okay. <laughs> I was a little nervous over there. Uh, yeah, so, so just a quick recap. Um, when you're out, outdoors, and before you even start uh, painting, or even sketching, just sit down and observe. Observe everything around, take it in. Because as artists, we are sponges. We uh, you know absorb a lot of things. So just take the time to sit down, just be still and decide what is exciting over there, what is interesting to me 
and then you know start with that otherwise we could be doing sketches forever but just look and see what is the first thing then you move on once you pick on what is the most exciting thing for you or the interesting then you decide whether you want to go vertical or horizontal and you as i showed you before you can always cut them into squares as you move on and then you begin you know you decide on the horizon line where should that be and then you just draw you measure you compare you draw and it goes on till you are ready and you know you don't always have to finish your sketches too sometimes you start a sketch and halfway through you get it i mean even a, even a, a, a minute or two into it you're like oh i know what i need to done so i don't need to do it and sometimes some of my sketches have notes that i've taken in there where i write what color they are or uh, how i would actually like um, the photograph that was on the extreme left which will uh, you know the tree which is on the um, the tree which is on the extreme left which i'm going to photograph so i will write over there you know i'm going to put in the tree on this side is actually the two photographs down i make notes for myself okay so all right this is an oil sketch that i did you know i was completely enamored by the dappled light that was on the waterfalls and by the time i walked down the light had shifted which is what dapple light does doesn't wait for anyone i still it was a pretty good view so i decided to paint it but i did not do a sketch for this one i just started painting there were a lot of decisions i had to make and what i realized is that i should have figured out uh, and you know removed all the problems that the composition because i wasn't copying this as is i was moving things around i should have done more um, sketches and I'm, I'm going to talk about this more in this area explaining what i did wrong you know because i think we learn most um, when we make mistakes and this definitely it was a successful sketch for me as a color study because I was able to get all these uh, colors in the dark. The, the picture didn't capture it, but the painting has all these lovely colors in the shadows and the, warm, the warmth of these tones I was able to capture. So as a color study, it worked. And you know, this greens over here. So as a color study, it was good, but as a composition, it, I'm trying to see how much, yeah. As a composition, it didn't really work. And I'll tell you why because i had to move these waterfalls around to make a good uh you know what i thought would make a good composition and squish these around yeah squish these around and also move these stones there was a lot of movement that was happening which i should have addressed in a sketch and i'll maybe save that for another day but um uh, yeah, so the most important thing to do, even when you are very good at painting, is to keep drawing, sketching, doing quick, quick sketches every day that you have no intention of even finishing as a painting is really good. It develops your memory and um, it's pretty good. You know, there was an experiment that was done by a neurologist, neuroscientist, and um, he did brain scans of a portrait artist and a graduate student who never drew. And what he found out was that the portrait artist had the ability to make technical, the, the part of the brain that was firing up was also making technical decisions, but it was also able to look at the nuances of the um, subjects face. So that's what happens when we practice, you know. So sketching definitely is a yes for me. Uh, if you would like to keep in touch with me, here is my email. And if you would like a PDF of the demo that I just uh, did, send me an email at this address with the subject Nava. And uh, that's the website address to get in touch with me. And thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity to teach. I love teaching. And I think that's the end of uh, today's class.